Hi friends, it's Helen Elizabeth and this is your best new self. Um, this is our weekly Bible study that we've been going through and we've been going through Romans. And so this Saturday we're going to be going through Romans 5. Um, I'm just so excited to be able to do this every single week with you guys. I love seeing your faces, seeing where you're from, all of those awesome things. So um, thank you for joining me every single week to do this. Hi friends, hello, thank you for joining. Um, anyway, so like I was saying, we're going to be going through Romans 5 today. We've been walking through Romans and today we're in Romans 5 and it's a really good one. So I'm really excited to talk about this. I feel like I've really walked through what we're about to talk about. And so I'm excited to kind of share some of my story with that. But um, hello, new friends, hi. But as always, just, you know, like, if you wanna say hi, if you have a question, if you wanna say anything, um, if you have a comment, or if you wanna tell me where you're from, I love knowing where everyone's from, so please comment at any time. And at the end, I don't really do it in the middle, but at the end, I'll go back and I will look at everyone's comments. So if this is your first time joining, basically look at this as just a kind of a casual talk where we talk about um, the Bible, I read you something from the Bible and then we do a little Bible study and I talk about that. But what I really want is to make this just applicable to your daily life, easy to understand so that the Bible seems relevant. So we don't just look at the Bible like, oh, okay, this is this really hard to understand thing, but we start looking at it like, okay, this can actually help me through the troubles I'm going through. Or it can help me be a better person or it can help me become like my whole thing is called your best new self. So all right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start out with prayer and then we are gonna go through chapter five. I'm only gonna read um, verses one through five. Although if you have time, please go and read the rest of the chapter. It's a really good chapter. Um, but I'm just gonna focus because there's just a huge message in just verses one through five. So we're gonna talk about that. Hi friends. And there's, we have someone from Lake Charles, Lauren from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us. Um, so yeah, so if you're just joining in, I really love to know where you're from. So please let me know and comment anything you have to say and I'll go back at the end and I'll look. So let's start with prayer and we'll get started. Dear Holy Father, thank you so much for this day and for this time that we get to spend with you. Lord, I just thank you so much that I get to do this with these amazing people. I pray that you would soften our hearts to hear what you have to say, Lord, and that you would speak through me to them. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll get started. So if you're just joining in, South Carolina, that's awesome. Um, if you're just joining in, we are going to be in chapter 5, 1 through 5. Okay? All right, so starting with verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into the grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And so that is a kind of a well-known, that's a well-known chapter, right, or part of a chapter. And so I want to actually read this in a different translation. Um, I love, y'all, I love uh, one of these called... Um, I'm trying to think what these are called right now. The word will come to me in a second. But I love reading these like from people who read the Bible and know like, what are these called? Commentaries. So I love reading commentaries and just learning more about what the Bible has to say. So one of the commentaries I really like is Barclay, William Barclay. It's a, probably a pretty old one. Um, but I love the translation that he uses. So I'm going to read that too. So this is the same thing, just in different wordage. It says, since then, we have been put into a right relationship with God in, con in con consequence of faith. Let us enjoy peace with him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, by faith, we are in possession of an introduction to the grace in which we stand. And let us glory in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but let us find a cause of glorifying in our troubles. For we know that trouble produces fortitude, and fortitude, fortitude produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not behoove an illusion because we love because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And so I love that translation too. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, obviously, is that we can have two different, let me make sure I'm on the right page because I don't want to lose that. Okay. Basically, we have two options for the ways that we look at suffering or troubles. And you know, if we think about both translations, so we, if you read, I'm reading from the Christian Standard Version. And so this version says um, our sufferings. So in his version, it says troubles. It can also be translated as pressure. So like when we feel the pressure of this world, we are going through trials and tribulation when we're experiencing hardship. And I know that every single one of us that has, is watching this right now or who will watch this, 
will experience hardship in some kind of way. You know, whatever that is. And I'm not saying it has to be as detrimental as some of the stuff that I've gone through. I mean, it can be small to other people, but it's hurtful to you. And that's what I like why he says troubles. Like he says troubles, pressure, like that's what he's talking about there. Rather than just like going through these ultimate sufferings. I help, think that helps us kind of understand that idea a little better. Okay, so let me get my notes here. So the first thing I think that we need to understand is at the beginning, it's saying that we can have, in verse one, it's talking about how we can have peace with God because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Basically, he has introduced us to God whenever we gave our lives to him. And he said, okay, y'all can have a right relationship now. He has justified us, which means that he has made us, he has, um, God has forgiven us of our sins, right? So we have been made right with God. We become righteous because of our faith in Jesus Christ, which we talked about last week. And so that's kind of what it's talking about at the beginning. So it starts out that Paul, the writer of Romans, is talking about a relationship, a relationship with God. And that's really important because when we move forward, what I'm talking about is having two different perspectives on how we can deal with suffering. I think it's an ultimate, the most important thing is to have a relationship with God before we, like talking about that aspect before we move forward. So he's saying you can find peace, you can find hope, you can find, I mean, if you look at all the words that are used in this, peace, hope, grace, all of those words, that comes from a relationship with him. And we have that once we, once we trust Jesus. So after we do that, we have this relationship and we can come to him. Now that relationship allows us to have the Holy Spirit, which it talks about in verse five. He's been given to us through our relationship with Jesus. Now that we have a relationship with God, we now have the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is more than just like, oh, I have the Holy Spirit. And I think that's important too. Sometimes we look at the Holy Spirit as just like, the Holy Spirit's just there. It's this whimsical thing that's just like, you know, yay, okay, you feel good. But no, the Holy Spirit's powerful. It, it is an extension of God, right? It is part, like, that they're three in one. He is part of God, or the Holy Spirit is part of God. And so what that does is it allows God to be within us and to give us that kind of power. And so he's saying, okay, now because you have this Holy Spirit within you, you can have hope. You can have hope for the future no matter what your circumstances are. And even in our circumstances, we can rejoice. Now, the word rejoice here, I want you to think about this a little differently. I put, you know, when we think of rejoice, we think about bringing glory to God, giving glory to Him, right? So we give glory to Him when we sing music to Him, when we spend time with Him, we're glorifying Him. But we can also glorify Him through our actions. So we can also rejoice through our actions. By our actions, we can show glory to God. So what I want you to think about is I want you to think about in verse, what is it, verse two, when it says we rejoice in our, I guess, no, in verse three, it says we rejoice in our suffering. So it said first in verse two, we rejoice in hope, right? And then we rejoice in our suffering. So you might read that and go, why do I rejoice? Why would I ever want to rejoice in suffering? And I don't think that that's, what I want you to think of it is not like, oh, I'm praising God because I'm suffering. Um, I'm saying I can bring glory to God through the way that I handle this suffering, through the way I handle this trouble, through the way I handle this pressure or these trials and tribulations, right? And so going on, before I get into tell you my story, kind of talk about my story, I also want to keep going on with this. So then it says, knowing that suffering produces endurance. So this endurance word that it's talking about is talking, it's, it can also be translated as fortitude. And fortitude is like, it's not just like passive endurance. Like when you think of endurance, sometimes you think of just like, there's kind of two ways to look at that. It's somebody that's like running a race, that's like growing their endurance and getting better. And there's also this idea of endurance that's just like, I'm just gonna endure it. I'm just gonna take it, right? I'm just gonna endure whatever I have to endure and keep on going. And that's not what it's talking about. He's not talking about passive endurance. He's talking about active, like, hold on, I think I wrote it down here. He's talking about actively overcoming our trials and tribulations. He's like saying, okay, when someone has the, like the idea of fortitude, it's kind of that idea of someone that refuses to give up. That person that has that fighting spirit that says, you know, just because I have this disability or because I have this problem or because I've been diagnosed with this thing or because for me, like I, because I lost my husband or because whatever it is, you insert the blank, whatever it is that your, your thing is. He's saying, no matter what, I'm going to actively overcome this with the help of God through the Holy Spirit. I'm going to actively overcome it and I have hope. I have hope in that because I have a relationship with God and I know that God is there for me. I know that God is fighting for me, that he wants the best for me. He takes care of me. We talk about that a lot, right? Okay, so there's this idea of actively trying to overcome versus just passively enduring. 
right? So that's like, so that's why both of those words are important. Endurance and fortitude are kind of like, that can be translated the same way, but it's different if you think about the way that, like the wordage that's being used. And then it says, okay, endurance produces character and character produces hope. So character, so this idea of character, um, this, in this, um, in this book, I was reading that, and it said that the word for, that's used, the Greek word that's used for, um, for character is dokami, which refers to the act of like putting metal through fire so that it can be perfected and purified. And so when it emerges, it's perfect. You know, it's like it's gold or it's sterling or whatever it is that um, that the metal that they were putting, they're putting through fire. And so basically it's saying that when we have that kind of fighting spirit, that fortitude, it produces a character that's like metal that's gone through fire and comes out perfected. It comes out better on the other side. Um, and I really like this, this uh, statement that William Barclay said. It said, when affliction is met with fortitude or that, like, that active endurance, that overcoming endurance. Um, so when affliction is met with fortitude, out of the battle of man emerges stronger, pure, better, and near. Or, sorry, let me say that again. When affliction is met with fortitude, out of the battle comes a man that emerges stronger, pure, better, and nearer God. I love that. I love that whenever you think about when you have gone through something really hard, and I don't, you know, whatever it is that you've gone through, if you can go through this, and this is where this two, this, these two ideas that I want us to think about, we have two ways that we can go through any tribulation, any trial, any tribulation, any small thing, every big thing. We have two ways we can go through it. We can let it beat us. We can let it just completely just beat us down. Or we can let it build character within us that we are able to actively push forward, to keep going. And so it says in verse 5, um, let's see, verse 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So this is where I want us to think about how do we, and this is where we can apply it to our lives, how do we handle hardship? How do we handle tribulation? Do we let it, because we can do it two ways. We can let going through our suffering, we can let it defeat us. We can let it just beat us down and say, you know, like, this isn't fair. We can, like, whine about it and complain about it. And I'm not saying we can't be sad about it. You know, like, whenever, and this is what I'm bringing in my story, you know, when I lost my husband, um, Craig Strickland, it wasn't like I was like, I'm going to rejoice in God. Like, it wasn't really that. It was that I was saying, I'm going to glorify God through my actions because I know even still in this moment, God is for me and he will get me through this. And I had hope. I had hope because I had the Holy Spirit within me and I had a relationship with God. And only through that, I was able to say, I know that he will see me through this. I know that he will walk through this with me. And I, even though I'm in pain now, I will get to the other side. And that can only come from, like we talked about in the very first verse, having an active relationship with God, having that relationship with Jesus and that relationship with God that allows the Holy Spirit to just grow within you. And then when every, and so when we think about this, I, I used to talk a lot about how I felt like a lot of things prepared me for losing my husband. But what I really think, it wasn't just like any one thing. It was just that all these little trials, all these little tribulations, all these little things I went through, all those were building in me. They were building endurance, that fortitude. They was building that character so that when my big, this big crisis happened in my life, I didn't crumble. I wasn't, I didn't say, okay, you know, like, God, I hate you. Why would you do this to me? But I was ready. Like I had, I was ready to face that. I was ready to go through that fire. I was able to say, okay, God, this is going to be hard. This is going to be a hard, however long this is going to be, God. But I, but I, I, but I trust you. You know, like that's why whenever we had his, um, his burial, I, I, did, I did kind of more of a private burial, but I did a, a big celebration of his life that was um, webcasted and people from all these different countries watched it. It was so cool. Um, but, you know, I was listening to the music and I truly was able to like lift my hands in praise to God, not because obviously like I was happy, but because I knew the only way that I was getting through this was because of the relationship that I had with him. Only through him did I have hope. And that's something that if we do not strengthen that relationship with God on a daily basis, we're not going to have that hope. So that when the time comes, when that tribulation comes, when that big thing happens, or that, that job, we don't get that job, or we, whatever it is, insert it there, but you're gonna, we, we will crumble. We'll say, I, I can't do this, and, and we just let it defeat us. And, you, and you've met people like this, right? Like you've met people that have allowed their circumstances, their backgrounds. This may even be you. You know, like at times I've let it be me too. 
you know, but I've said like our, my background, what I've experienced, I'm bad at this, I'm bad at that, or, you know, like I had the, a bad upbringing, I don't have a lot of money, I don't, like we let little things, these, not little things, but we help these things get to us and defeat us versus when we see those people that have a, these amazing stories that, you know, like where they, they just overcome so much and you're like, how, how did you overcome that? Right? How could you overcome it? Well, it's because they had faith in God, and that that faith in God was what allowed them to have hope, to have this hope that they can get through it, they can push through it, and not just that, but have a fighting spirit, to have that fortitude. I love the idea of fortitude, where you kind of like I think of a fort that's like, no, like I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna fight, like I'm gonna face you straight up, whatever this trial is, and I'm gonna do this with God. I refuse to let this beat me. Having that kind of mentality will change our lives and it will allow us to do so many things that we never thought we would be able to do. It will allow God to use us in amazing ways, to use us for whatever purpose he's truly calling us to. It changes our whole perspective from like, why me, to I'm going to do this. I can do this. And I, I want that for all of us. I want that for you. I want that for me. But that's why I love this verse so, uh, this chill this, and these verses so much, because when we look at that, and it just changes, it's almost like it can be written as like a battle cry, you know what I mean? But it's, it's truly a saying like, okay, you know, if I'm going to go through this, I'm going to rejoice or I'm going to show glory to God through my actions. I'm going to say, instead, this has beaten me. Why am I going through this? I may have a minute where I kind of pity myself, but I'm going to say, no, I'm going to face you. I'm going to face, face this. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to do it the best that I can with God by my side, and I'm going to work through it. And ultimately, when we do that, we will emerge so much stronger and more beautiful and more capable on the other side. And I can tell you from someone who's gone through that fire, especially of like of losing my husband, of just if you've been listening to me for a long time, you know, like all my all my tribulations I've gone through in my life. But so I won't go through all of them. But the most recent, obviously, was that and then other ones. So I won't go on all those. But whenever you got through that, walking through it, it's so it, it feels like it's going to defeat you, but if you have, and then you feel like there's no way this can ever get better. But I promise there's nights that I cried and all I could think of was my only hope right now is God. Because of him, I can do this. Because of him, I'm going to walk through it. I, I, he has seen me through so many things, so many other things before that I know he'll see me through now. And I like in how Barclay says, or the translation that Barclay has says, you know, that, that hope is not an illusion. It's not an illusion. It's not like it's not built on man-made principles like, you know, I'm hoping in a person or a thing or a job or an ability of mine. I'm not hoping in anything else but him because he is the only thing that's lasting. Everything else will fail us. Only he is lasting. And when we put our hope in him, his love that fills us up can get us through anything. It can give us that fighting spirit, that fighting spirit that will overcome and actively overcome our trials and tribulations with him by our side. So I hope that that helped you today, guys. I, I absolutely love this section of scripture. And like I said, I hope you'll continue reading chapter five because it's a really good chapter. Um, but whatever you're experiencing today, I pray that, and I, and I know that I will experience things um, in the near future, probably having a kid, all the things I'm gonna have to deal with with that. I'm gonna feel like a failure sometimes and I'm gonna deal with things. But I really believe if we'll take a moment and say, okay, I have two perspectives. I have two ways I can look at this, the two ways I can act out this, this whole trial tribulation thing. I can either let it defeat me, let me become bitter because of it, let me let it just like consume me, or I can say, no, I'm going to actively fight through this. I'm gonna actively come out better, emerge stronger and better like metal that's gone through fire and has been perfected. I am going to actively do this with God and I'm going to give him glory through my actions. We have those two perspectives, and I pray today that whatever you're going through now or whatever you've gone through or whatever you'll go through in the future, that you'll take on that fortitude type spirit, not just passive endurance, but actively overcoming, because I believe that you can do that with your relationship with God. Spend time with him. Read your Bible. Journal. Y'all know I'm a huge journal person. Journal and let him speak to you through your writing and your prayers, because that's the only way that you're going to really learn and glean from him. At least that is for me. That's the only way I could really connect and really hear what he has to say. So 
I hope that that helped you today. Um, I don't know what you're going through, but know that I'm praying for you today, and especially after we end this, I'm gonna be praying just for everyone who watches it, that whatever you're going through, whatever you're gonna go through, whatever you have gone through, that you'll take on this fighting spirit, that you'll take this and you'll write it down somewhere and you'll say, okay, God, I'm going to, I'm going to change or I'm going to allow my actions to give you glory. And I know and I, I have hope in you that you are going to work through me and that you're gonna get me through this.